Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, the rainy weather continues. Last night we got an inch and a half in thunderstorms. And it's pretty darn soggy out here. So today I'm continuing work on the MD. Another big project, I'm gonna put on the front. I'm gonna put on the front bolster, the front pedestal. Hopefully the front wheels will get them mounted and they'll look like a tractor again with four wheels on the ground. First thing we gotta do is assemble the front pedestal and the front bolster together. Moving heavy things. And the first thing that goes in the pedestal here is this felt dust seal. And it just fits up in here. I pre-oiled it so that everything slides together easier. Here's a thrust bearing. I'm reusing the one that was in it because it was in good shape. And I pre-lubed it. We'll put that on. We got my new paint all greasy. And I'll lube up this bushing and lube up the top of the shaft where it slides in to the seal that's in the top. Now we can slide the shaft into the pedestal. Oh. Come on, get started. There we go. easy. Now I have to install the steering sector gear on the top of the shaft. That and the nut that goes on top are what hold the shaft in place for when I lift it onto the tractor. This sector gear has some wear on it. It's not too bad. They'll always wear toward the middle because the tractor's driving ahead most of the time. I think it'll be alright. If it doesn't, they're readily available aftermarket. So, we'll put this in. Facing straight ahead, like that, washer, I'm going to close this up temporary again because it's got to be taken back apart to put in the worm gear and the shaft that goes to the steering wheel and also to fill it with grease. I use corn head grease, a flowable grease. Instead of oil in these, it helps keep them from leaking out the bottom. What I do is I use a longer bolt so that I can sort of get it positioned up and put that temporary bolt in. And then we can lower it a bit to get it straightened. Before I get too far putting in the hardware, this is how I paint bolts when I don't have something else to mount them on. I just take a 2x6 or a 2x4, drill holes in at the bolt size and stand the bolts up in. Other hardware I just paint on a piece of plywood where only one side needs to get painted. We'll just tighten these down and then I'll come back and tighten them up more once we get the other rail on. Here's a little piece of planning that I did. Before I put the front pedestal on, I installed the fan belt because this gap right here is kind of hard to get the fan belt through. So now I'll have it ready to go. Next step is take these temporaries out and then we can put the other frame rail on. And I'll take this fuel line off that I put on just to test fit because it's in the way. And now I can put this frame rail on. If it'll let me. There.
Now we can go ahead and put on the wheels and we had to do quite a bit of work to these wheels, mostly my dad and his machinist friend. These stops were all worn down where the clamps had come loose and worn against things. So dad welded them back up and then I ground them down to shape to take that wear out. And then I guess the biggest job probably was these were all worn down and actually had worn down inside the, the hub here. And he built that up with weld and then took it and put it on a mill and milled out a new flat surface for each of the bolts to go on. So hopefully the clamps will fit on tight now and everything will be just like factory. First thing that goes on is this triple lip rubber dust shield and this replaced the earlier style felt dust shields that used to go on these. And then the inner bearing which I already packed. And then the wheel and I like to grease the races for the bearings in these before I put them on. And then the outer bearing. Get in there, you. Oh, there. And of course, we tighten these down until we get a little drag on the wheel. Not much. There. That feels good. And we got this castle nut with a pinch bolt on it. Belt and suspenders. Next I gotta make some gaskets for these bearing caps. Pretty easy thing to do. A little bit of grease on here. Put it on. And we've got an outline for the inside. Punch out the holes with a gasket punch. and cut it out. Well, there's one. And I'll just repeat the process for the second, but this time I got a template to use. And I do use gasket sealer on these. I want to make sure that no moisture or dust gets in through the cap, so it makes it a pain for repacking wheel bearings, but I figure it's good insurance. Now I can go ahead and put the wheels on and originally these had square head bolts in the back which held the bolt head and trapped it in the recess so it didn't spin. I don't know if you've looked but to buy new square head bolts now they're an arm and a leg. I can't remember exactly what they were. Four, five, six bucks a piece something like that on McMaster car so I went ahead and bought some grade 8 hex bolts and I've done that for other tractors like the H. They're just too expensive. Oh the other thing I wanted to mention is inside each of these hubs there's a giant grease cavity and I've read a lot of debates on whether that needs to be filled with grease or not. I do not fill them with grease because I don't think that the grease will move from side to side. I think it just sticks in there and what's on the bearing stays on the bearing. It doesn't flow so I just pack the bearings and then I repack them as needed. I don't fill up this big void. Alrighty.
these will loosen up after driving for a little while and I'll have to retighten them. It always happens. Well, should we let her down so she can stand on her feet again? Let the hoist down. Let the screw jack down. Yeah! Looky what I got here. A brand new radiator. Let me go get the old one and I'll show you why. Here's why I had to get a new radiator. This is the old radiator and I pressure tested it when I first started working on it and it pressure tested fine at 5 psi. It didn't have any leaks. So I went ahead and I did some repair work. I had to reattach the bottom brackets and reattach the overflow. And I thought it was fine. Well, after I got all that work done, I took it out and I washed it off with water and squirted out all the debris that it collected down in here. And it was really bad on the front. There was a big mouse nest that was all heaped up in front of here when I tore the tractor apart. And what happened, mouse pee is the worst, is it rotted out the bottom of the core where all the core tubes come into the bottom tank. And it was seeping along all of those. So I had to make a choice. I could have taken this to a radiator shop and had it recored, but adding to the problem with the core, it's been cobbled on on the bottom. See, this is all solder around here, around the mounting bolt holes. So, given the two of those together, I figured, well, I might as well get a new radiator. The new radiator I bought is made by Northern Radiator, and they have a really good reputation for making quality radiators. There's a lot of junk out there with paper-thin copper. This is all copper bottom, top and bottom tanks, copper cores. And I was really lucky, I called Northern, they don't sell direct, but it happened to be there's a dealer the next town over and they had this for me pretty much overnight. I got some other stuff to do here before I put the radiator on. And I gotta make or order some bottom pads for it, but we'll just put it on and see if it fits all right. The number one thing I hear about the cheapo radiators is there's this hole in the radiator where the steering shaft goes through and I've heard about people having to modify them, move the hole because the shaft won't go through, but if I sight down the hole, it looks like it lines up all right. Well, I took the cap off and we can check it. Here's a steering shaft. So on this side, the hole is right centered on the shaft. And on this side, it's a little bit off center, but I've got the pads that are gonna lift this up a little bit, and that should bring it right on center. So that's a good deal, another problem solved. And the best thing about buying the radiator from a local dealer is I got it cheaper than I could have by like a couple hundred bucks. It was 450 bucks for the radiator. They were 650 or more for a decent radiator on the internet. So sometimes buying local is actually cheaper than buying off the internet. But Back to the engine, I forgot and I screwed up on this. Underneath the front motor mount here, there were shims. And it doesn't really matter what side the shims go in because this whole thing rotates. So you just want to put in back in what was taken out. But at this point, they don't really fit. I got two of them slid under here. I'm trying to align them with this half inch drill bit. And if I have to, they're just thin material. If I don't get them aligned perfectly, I can just drill down and just drill the hole out in them but i definitely want to get them back in there well i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these ones out that i put in to begin with so i slid all four of the ones that were in here under here not the way a drill bit's meant to be used There we go. This front motor mount here is designed to be able to spin while the engine stays fixed. So in other words, it relieves some stress off the front of the engine. If the engine 
revs and twists a little bit, this allows it to do that while still keeping it fixed within the frame and stable. At least that's my understanding. I thought it might be because the frame might twist going through the field, but people that work on big engines have said big, en big diesels have these and <laughs> this engine is about as stout as can be, but it still has one. Next we can put on the water pump. I gotta take this masking off first. So I, I decided I was gonna cheat a little bit here. In order to adjust the belt tension, you turn in this shiv of the pulley. It's on a large thread that runs around the hub. And the more you turn it in, the bigger the diameter that the belt rides in goes to. Well, the generator belt pulley is right back here behind it. And I was thinking, well, I'm gonna to have to take this off to get the generator belt on, I think. Yes, I am. And I'm actually going to put in an alternator, and i got to get an alternator and mock it up here to find out what length belt I need and how it's going to fit. So I'm actually not going to permanently install the water pump. I'm just going to temporarily bolt it up here until I get my alternator. That'll make installing the belts a whole lot easier. Well, that's it for today. What's next? Well, I gotta put the injector lines on to the pump. I gotta get an alternator at Napa so I can test fit and I can make brackets for it as needed and then size the belt for it so I can put that on. I gotta put the gauges on the gauge bracket and then after that, we'll be forward to the radiator. So I got a lot of work yet to do. It's a lot of moving pieces, you know, I got to get this, got to get that, and to get it all together, there's so many bits and pieces at the end of a job like this. So, thanks for joining me. I'll keep going. It's supposed to be nicer tomorrow, so we'll probably be outside building fence, but I'll be back to this sooner or later. I'll see you next time.